All right, now we move on to IP addressing. So again, detection, prevention, we know that again, that um, IP addressing is easy for the adversary to overcome, right? From a defensive perspective, it, uh, you know, it could be as simple as fast flux, right? Having IP addresses swap out very, very quickly uh, and, and doesn't give the defenders enough time to really build up uh, any reputational type intelligence around that IP address. So in regards to detection, um, again, we've got endpoint amp, umbrella, tetration, firepower, email, web, threat grid, and stealth watch all provide a detection capability. Prevention, we have endpoint amp, umbrella, tetration, firepower, email, and web. So let's get into a little bit more of the meat. All right, so Stealth Watch, right? So Stealth Watch takes flow data, right? It obviously observes the network and, and, and we can pull IP addresses out. Um, it also provides behavioral analysis and machine learning capabilities. Um, Cisco Talos also provides intelligence so we can determine malicious IP addresses that may exist. Uh, this includes third-party feed data, uh, further enriching the, the data that's ingested within uh, StealthWatch. Proxy log data also can be fed into StealthWatch. Uh, again, this is going to further enhance the or, and enrich the data that we, we have. Um, intelligence gained here, obviously, we see flow data on the network. It's talking to a suspicious IP address or an IP address that we're interested in. Um, we could take that information and, and build it and move it into uh, prevention capabilities. Um, Stealth Watch obviously is still a detection capability, and you're going to see this throughout uh, the entire series. Um, Endpoint AMP, um, you actually have the ability to create IP based block and allow lists. So, um, device flow correlation allows you to flag or block suspicious network activity. Um, you can use policies to specify AMP for endpoints connectors behavior when suspicious connection is detected and also whether the connector should use addresses in the Cisco Talos intelligence feed, custom IP lists that you create, uh, obviously a combination of both. Endpoint cloud, endpoint and cloud-based IOC scans. Uh, we can also use orbital uh, scans to scan the endpoint. Um, obviously able to detect maybe IP addresses that might be embedded in the system uh, or potentially communicating outbound. Um, cognitive integration also detects IP addresses. Um, and so um, again, there is the prevention and detection capability for endpoint AMP. Intelligence gained here obviously can feed into other platforms as well. Firepower threat defense. Um, firepower threat defense. Uh, obviously, you know IP-based controls exist, right? Um, it can. Uh, it also consumes IP security intelligence through Cisco Talos. You can build custom lists. You can integrate with third-party feeds using Sticks and Taxi. Um, both detection and prevention capabilities are available. Firepower Threat Defense also does deep, deep packet analysis, uh, which allows for advanced custom detection and prevention capabilities. You've also got geo uh, location feature that can block IP source based on specific country or region. Again, intelligence gained uh, can be used in any preventative platform. Okay, email. Uh, Cisco Email Security has the ability to inspect and block based on the outcome of that inspection using sender IP, which is fed by Cisco sender IP reputation filtering service, right? There's multiple engines within the platform itself. Um, you can configure the filtering score thresholds for the listener. Uh, you can create lists um, uh, using IP addressing, so the host access table, IP range, specific host or domain name, and partial host name, DNS list query responses, IP reputation service organization classification, IP reputation score. So multiple different attributes, right? Obviously, we're focused on IP addressing, but I just wanted to make sure that I'm providing uh, you know, additional context as well around some of the other capabilities. Um, leveraging message and content filtering uh, capabilities built into the platform um, allows for multiple attributes that can be leveraged, including remote IP. 
Um, content filter uh, can also leverage geolocation feature to identify IP addresses to block emails coming from specific regions. Um, there's also external threat feeds that can also be ingested using sticks and taxi to leverage IP watch lists. Uh, again, intelligence gained uh, can be used in preventative capabilities. Web, uh, web security appliance and, and cognitive itself. Um, Cisco WSA leverages Talos for block list for scoring and reputation of destination IP addresses. You can also leverage custom URL categories that can contain IP addresses to prevent direct to IP connections. You've also got web-based reputation service that will leverage multiple attributes, including IP addressing uh, to determine the reputation of a site. You've got L4 traffic monitoring capabilities that can also block IP addresses for botnet, phone home activity. You've got Cisco Cognitive that analyzes proxy data fed from the Cisco WSA and provides insight into IP addresses as well. Threat Grid Analysis Report uh, will provide additional insight into IP addresses. Uh, intelligence gain can be used uh, as well. So um, Threat Grid also is available within the email platform as well. Um, and, and so what we're saying here is if, if a file gets detonated in, 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 in threat grid, um, because there's that integration piece, there might be some IP addressing that that's, that's being called out here, um, that would also be detected, right? Umbrella provides IP layer enforcement using AnyConnect for Windows with the Umbrella module. Uh, you can also use the Umbrella agent for Windows or Mac, uh, which is powered by Cisco Talos and Umbrella Intelligence. Um, this mitigates uh, risk when malware authors might use IP addresses to bypass uh, DNS lookups when creating a threat because everybody understands that Umbrella foundationally was built on DNS, but it does a whole lot more than, than that, right? Um, Umbrella Investigate gives you uh, the most comprehensive view of relationships um, when it comes to domains, IPs, files, uh, which definitely helps understand the attack infrastructure and predict future uh, threats. Um, you could leverage Umbrella SIG uh, Essentials. So this is where we get into full proxy capabilities. Um, and you can take risky IPs and add them to an access policy in the cloud-delivered firewall capability as well to reduce risk. Um, the Umbrella Investigate allows research of SHA-256s. Uh, again, nothing about the hash, right? The hash is, is, is in that trivial stage, but this might provide some insight into additional um, uh, attributes or indicators like IP addressing um, that the file is accessing. Uh, you can pivot into Threat Grid, obviously, for deeper analysis as well and get behavioral insight. Um, these IPs can be used to feed, obviously, preventative platforms uh, as well. Um, sim SIMs also can be further enriched using the Investigate API. So there's a detection and prevention capability with Umbrella. Threat Grid has the ability to analyze files, calculate hashes to determine behaviors, and the supporting artifacts associated with the hash. Um, so this includes identifying IP addresses um, that are seen when the file is executed within that sandbox en environment, right? So th threat grid is that outside looking in sandbox. Threat grid integration through APIs can provide prevention and retrospective capabilities with other security uh, products. So what that means is, is that when you have firepower or, you know, email or web, et cetera, integrated with threat grid, the moment we know it's bad, we're going to update um, uh, Firepower as an example. And so when we do that update, um, we're going to do a retrospective event. So tell you if it was in prior to us knowing it was bad, but also uh, preventing any additional attacks. Um, obviously, intelligence gain can be used in, in uh, other preventative platforms. Um, but the, the other piece to note here is behavioral indicators uh, obviously provide traits uh, and behaviors uh, that have been identified as indicators of malicious activity. So these indicators include severity levels. You've got HTTP traffic, DNS traffic, TCP IP network sessions, processes, artifacts, registry activities, and more, right? 
Um, and so again, it, that's broader than IP addressing. It, you get a, a, a comprehensive view of, of, of the threat that may be associated with that file or that analysis that you're doing. Uh, Cisco Tetration um, agent on the host understands all processes and network communications taking place. Um, tet tetration can leverage uh, an open external API to pull in block domains and IPs and compare that against recent flow data for analysis. Um, leveraging enforcement mode within Tetration builds whitelist policies on the host using Linux IP tables or Windows Advanced Firewall, which protect assets from communicating with malicious IP addressing. Um, this can provide an automated uh, policy using Tetration Engine, providing host-based micro-segmentation, uh, but it can also identify suspicious network communication. And again, so, so Tetration's got that detection and prevention uh, capability. Again, intelligence gained here can use uh, be used in other preventative platforms. 